Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video today. If you are new, welcome. My name is Mallory. If you are not new, welcome back. So I'm really excited to share today's video with you guys. It is all about the Halloween tumbler that I created a couple weeks ago. When I posted it to social media, I was blown away by the positive feedback. There were so many comments and questions that I knew I needed to put a video together and show you guys step-by-step -step how I created it, show you some tips along the way, and definitely show you a fail along the way. Um, I learned my lesson about making cutting corners and taking shortcuts. So I'll share that with you guys as well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I will have all of the products that I use listed in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm starting with a 30 ounce skinny. It's been sanded and Prepped. It um, actually came white, so I just gave it a quick sanding. And I'm going to paint the bottom half gray and the top half black. So the only reason I'm using acrylic paint on the bottom is because I didn't have spray paint. You could use whatever type of paint that you want. Um, I'm gonna paint the bottom half gray, like I said, and then I'll take it outside and I'll show you after I spray paint the top of black. I'm just gonna kind of fade it in so it's like a nice ombre. I'll let this dry for about 15, 20 minutes and we'll move right into the glitter application. I'm using the epoxy method for that. I mixed up about five milliliters of epoxy and I'm really only gonna use maybe one milliliter. I want a super, super thin coat on this. And looking back, I probably could have just painted the whole cup black because once it was under epoxy, all of it was pretty dark. So at this point, it's just gonna be a guide for our glitter. So as soon as you get the epoxy on, smooth it out really nice, make sure there's no lines, and we'll be ready to apply the glitter. For the glitter, I'm using three different colors. They are all from Glitzy City. One is a black, one is like a bluish charcoal gray holographic, and then one is a silver holographic. I'm gonna start at the bottom with the lightest color, which is the silver, and I'm gonna go in really heavy on the bottom. Um, I wanna kind of establish a guide. So really heavy here, so no other glitter is going to stick to this, if that makes sense. Um, I'm coating all of the epoxy with this silver. And then I'm gonna hold the cup up higher and sprinkle the glitter up a little bit higher as well, and just kind of let it fall right up to where the black paint starts. So there's still room to blend those colors. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of blending. So right now it's just kind of a guide or a base for the colors. So I'll come in with the second color really heavy in the middle and then hold the cup at an angle and kind of let the glitter fall. So hold your glitter shaker up high and your cup at an angle and just let the glitter fall into the next color. We're not even meeting those glitters yet, if that makes sense. So I'll come in with the black, same process, really heavy on the top, and then just lightly start blending it into that middle color. So you can still see in the middle between the silver and the black, there's, there's still epoxy that's wet that glitter is gonna stick to, and that's what we're gonna use to really blend those colors. So I'll come back in with the silver, and just kind of sprinkle it up a little bit higher until it meets that second color. Repeat the process with the bluish charcoal gray, whatever you want to call that color, and then the same thing with the black. So all in all, I went over this cup three times with the glitter working in steps. So getting that blend and making it really seamless is all about multiple applications. So obviously one epoxy application, but we're going over this glitter a few times and really working on blending it all out. I let that glitter and epoxy dry for at least eight hours and then I sealed it with a spray sealant and I'm coming in here now with polyacrylic and I'm generously painting it all over the cup. 
This is personal preference. You don't have to do this. I have a whole video on sealing your cups with polyacrylic, but I find that it just really helps uh, use less epoxy in the first coat because all those you know grooves and cracks and crevices are sealed already and it prevents any of those colors from shifting and moving into the other ones when you apply the epoxy. So I'll let this dry for at least three hours and then I'll be ready to apply the first layer of epoxy. I'm going to do two coats on this before we move into our decals and stencils. So this was the first coat. I used about 20 milliliters on the 30 ounce skinny. I hit it with the torch. I let it cure for at least six hours and then I went straight into a second coat. So this is after the second coat. It's pretty smooth for the most part. I do want to sand it out. Just make sure I get all those bumps out. I want it completely smooth before we apply our decals because if there is anything that isn't smooth, it will show through the paint. So these are the images that I'm using. I've got the two tree lines and the little bats and the moon. They're actually listed on my website if you're interested. Here are the approximate sizes that you're gonna need. So for the 30 ounce skinny, I printed it at 9.75 inches wide and we're just gonna print it out. I'm using 631 Oracle, so it's a removable vinyl. And once I cut my stencil out, I'm just going to apply it like I would a normal decal. I'm gonna apply the transfer tape. I'm using Frisco Craft. I really love their transfer tape. Um, and like a normal decal, we're gonna put the transfer tape all over it. And then to wrap it around the cup, I like to just pull back like an inch. So you're gonna pull the paper backing about an inch down and it'll expose the vinyl and the transfer tape. We're gonna apply it right on the bottom of the cup and measure, double check that it's gonna go all the way around. And then to wrap it around the cup, I'm just gonna take that paper backing and pull it back and kind of rotate the cup and smooth the vinyl out with my thumbs. You might have a slight overlap here. Um, it really just depends on the sizing. I had to play with it a few times to get the sizing down correctly. But with the overlap, it's really easy to fix because we're painting over everything. This is just a stencil. It doesn't matter what the vinyl looks like as long as it's completely sealed and there's no air bubbles. So remove the transfer tape. Excuse the passing car. And then don't worry about what that looks like. We're just gonna clean up the edges, make sure that it is completely seamless. And all we want to do is now spray paint that area. First, I wanna cover it though, so I don't get any overspray on the exposed cup. So I'm just wrapping some saran wrap on it and securing it with tape, whatever you have on hand. You could use paper, you could use more vinyl, whatever you have, not a big deal. You just wanna make sure that you don't get any excess spray paint. So I'm gonna start with a flat white spray paint and that's gonna be our first layer of trees. So take it outside, just give it a quick, nice, even coat, uh, short, quick bursts. And if you're using a flat spray paint, it should dry in about 15 to 20 minutes and then you can start removing all of the vinyl. Save that for your next step because we're gonna have to come back and do it with the black. And then just really get in there and remove all this vinyl. Um, it shouldn't pull the paint off as long as you let it dry long enough because we're using a removable vinyl, it's gonna come up pretty easy. You're not gonna have any residue left and you're gonna be left with clean, crisp lines. So from here, I went straight into the second tree line, which is gonna be the black and same process, I removed about an inch. I wanna place it a little bit further down on the cup because I wanna see some of that white exposed. Um, I had a little bit too much of vinyl left over. I guess I sized it wrong here. No big deal though. I just cut that excess piece off, lined it up as best as I could, and then um, just kinda cut that little piece so it was seamless. 
This is when I started to question what I was doing. I knew that I should have sealed the white paint prior because the transfer tape was kind of sticking to the tape. I saw some residue and then when I had to fix some of the the tree line here where it overlapped, I started scratching the paint and I just I knew that it wasn't going to work out, but I pushed forward, I was crossing my fingers, hoping for the best, and stay tuned. <laughs> so same process, cover everything up with the saran wrap or whatever you're using, and then take it outside and spray all of that with black. I'm using a flat black spray paint, so again, it's gonna dry really fast. Quick, even, short bursts so you don't get any running and then take it inside, let it dry. So once it was dry, I came back through, I removed all of the stencil and again, I knew that I was gonna have to fix it. There was a lot of imperfections. I could see scratches on the white paint from the tool I was using to remove the vinyl. So, here we are, I decided to take some heavy duty acetone, a rag and some elbow grease and I removed all of that paint. I sanded the cup down and we started over. I put the white tree line on first and then I put a coat of epoxy over it so I wouldn't have to worry about anything happening when I put the vinyl over it again. I wouldn't have to worry about scratching it. Um, repeated this step after that layer of epoxy was dry so I did the black tree lines again and I just knew that this was definitely the better option I didn't have to worry about that tool scratching any of the paint there was no touch-ups everything was super crisp super clean so we were ready to move into our final decals these are just chrome uh, this is a chrome vinyl from Tep Tech wrap? I'm sorry, having a hard time speaking. So just a basic vinyl decal application here. I'm gonna put the moon and I've got a few bats sized in various dimensions. I'm just gonna place them wherever my heart desires. There's no right or wrong place. And then we'll be ready to move into our final coats of epoxy. I ended up doing two more coats of epoxy on this and then it was all done. I absolutely love how it turned out. I love all the dimension. If you guys made it all the way through to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so.